Story by Yon Kriangă It happened a long time ago. If it hadn't happened, we wouldn't be talking about it. I'm not as old as this story. I'm younger by two, three days. Since when the flea was putting on a 99-pound iron horseshoe on one of its legs, and it still thought of itself as light. There was once a married man, and that man was living in the same house with his wife and his mother-in-law. His wife, who had a baby boy, wasn't the sharpest pencil in the box. The mother-in-law wasn't very smart either. One day, our man gets out of the house to take care of some chores, as any man does. His wife, after she bathed her baby, swaddled him, and fed him, she put him in his cradle next to the fireplace, as it was winter. Then she cuddled him and sang him lullabies until he fell asleep. After she put him to sleep, she got to thinking and started screaming as loud as she could. Oh no, my baby, my baby. Her mother, who was twisting some yarn behind the fireplace, became possessed by fear and she threw away the spindle and the distaff that she was holding and jumping like no other, she asked, what is it, love? What's wrong? Mom, mom, my baby is going to die. When and how? Here's how. Do you see that huge rock salt on the fireplace? I see it. And if the cat jumps on there, it's going to push it right on my baby's head and it's going to kill my baby boy. My, oh my, I think you're right, my dear. It looks like the time has come for your baby to leave this world. While staring at the rock salt and with the arms crossed, as if someone had tied them, they both started crying as if they were crazy, so that the whole house was boiling. As they were bawling their eyes out, look who's coming. The boy's dad comes through the door, hungry and sad like no other. What is it? What's wrong, you crazy women? Then the women, getting a hold of themselves, started wiping their tears off and complaining to him about the tragedy that never happened. The man, after listening to them, couldn't believe what they were saying and said, Wow, I saw many fools in my lifetime, but none as the two of you. I'm going to travel everywhere in the world, and if I find someone dumber than you, I'm going to come home, otherwise no. After having said that, he let out a sigh, got out of the house without saying goodbye, and left while being very upset and sullen. While wandering aimlessly, without having a destination in mind, after a while he stopped for a bit and saw something really weird, like he had never seen before. A man was holding an empty, big cup, with a cup's mouth aimed towards the sun. He was quickly yanking it and taking the cup inside the hut. Then he got out again, put the cup with its mouth towards the sun, and so on. Our confused traveler stopped and said, Hello there, kind fellow. Hello to you, my friend. What are you doing here? Well, I'm working hard for the last two, three days to take this ugly sun into my hut so that I can have some light, and I can't. Man, that's hard work, our traveler said. Don't you have an axe handy? Sure I do. Take it by its handle, break your hut right here, and the sun will enter by itself. He did that right away and the sun's light entered the hut. This is a great miracle, dear man, said the host. If God hadn't brought you around here, I would have gotten old trying to get inside, uh, trying to get the sun inside my hut using this cup. Another idiot, said the traveler to himself and walked on. And he kept going. After a while, he got to a village and by chance he stopped at a man's house. That man was very skilled and was able to put together a whole ox wagon inside his living room. Now he wanted to pull it out in front of the house, and he was pulling on it, he was pulling with all his power, but the ox wagon was not coming out. Do you know why? The doors of the house were smaller than the ox wagon. The man wanted to take out the door hinges. He thought he could take out the ox wagon that way. Instead, our traveler taught him to pull apart the ox wagon, to take out of the house all the components one by one, and then to put them together again outside. 
Thank you very much, kind sir, the host said. You taught me well. Just look here. I almost tore down my beautiful house because of this ox wagon. After thinking to himself, another dummy, our traveler kept going until he got to another house. What do we have here? A man with a hay fork in his hand wanted to throw some nuts from his barn to his attic. Why do I always run into dum-dums? thought the traveler. Why are you so nervous, my friend? the traveler asked. Look, I want to throw these nuts in the attic, and this damn hay fork is no good. You can try doing that until forever, my friend. You can swear as much as you want. The hay fork doesn't hear you. Do you have a backpack? Of course I do. Put the nuts in the backpack, take it on your back and climb to the attic. The hay fork is for hay, not for nuts. The man listened and he got the job done in a few minutes. Our traveler didn't waste time there. Instead, he left after having seen another fool. He kept going until he saw something really crazy, so crazy that he couldn't stop laughing. A man had tied a rope around the cow's neck and he had climbed on top of a barn where he had a little bit of hay. He was pulling by the rope to get the cow on the barn. The cow was roaring terribly and the man seemed extremely tired. Dear man, said our astounded traveler, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? Can't you see? I see, but I can't understand. Well, this cow is famished, but he doesn't want to come on top of the barn to eat the hay that I put here. Wait a moment, my friend. You're going to choke this poor cow. Take the hay down and feed the cow down here. But won't I lose some of the hay when I take it down? Don't be a cheapskate. Then the man listened and the cow got out alive. So our traveler, thinking about all the foolishness he saw, said to himself, the cat could have jumped on the fireplace to push down the rock salt, but trying to take the sun inside with a cup, trying to get the nuts to the attic using the hay fork and pulling the cow on the barn to feed it there, that's something out of this world. Then the traveler got back to his house and stayed with his family, as he thought they were smarter than all of the people he saw in his journey.